based on community spread, which has only gotten worse. Uh, we're going to get to your comments on the Facebook, and we do have some uh, callers on the line. We're going to get to you guys, too, 637-0094. Uh, we're just continuing with this discussion as uh, the announcement uh, made and confirmed by Adeloup's uh, communications director, Crystal Paco San Augustine, that uh, it's anticipated that the governor will sign an executive order uh, today, allowing for the return of face-to-face for schools that are ready uh, one of our trusted voices here on the program, he's the former chair of the Physicians Advisory Group. His words, reopening schools right now, absolutely stupid. Dr. ho Wen, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi. Uh, wait, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just say it, um, I have no word for it. It's, um, you know, it's really had to be um, no, I, for the record, you know, I fully support our face-to-face education for our kids, but it had to be, there's a lot of plan to be in place to ensure that the safety of our children in the hospital. Um, that's some, but I do not think that we do anything different um, um, today. Um, compared to about two, three weeks ago when we closed the school. Yeah. I don't think that any um, plan is in place uh, that um, uh, are comfortable with both the public health, GDOE, and the parents. Um, I think that those plans are in place, they should be communicate that to the public. So that way the parents are not so much concerned and send their kid to school. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, kids need to be in school. But again, it need to be um, a lot of uh, plan need to be in place, and everyone need to know the plan be- before the parents are there. You know, we don't want to send a kid to school and then there's a lot of positive again that in the newspaper, and then uh, the parents panic and then we end up shut down the school again. Right. Um, so um, things need to be out in the public regarding what any change already made uh, in the last two weeks before. Um, we feel comfortable when the children um, can go back to school. I want. I have a son that's still in, in high school, and I want my son to go back to school. But at this point, I don't see any new things that would put in place across the board within the uh, private and public school um, to ensure that um, the education and the, the school are safe for uh, for our children to go back. And you know, if I look back two, three weeks ago, um, to me, the school are safe. I gotta tell you that. Uh, it's just the communication and the release of the positive um, and the contact tracing and the isolation. Uh, I don't think it's done appropriately. Uh, and I think that's the reason why um, the, um, the public uh, get panic and also the parent get scared. So I think those things had to be fixed before we started to open the school. And, you know, it had to be put out two, three weeks at a time. So that way GDOE and everyone have a chance to to make a plan. Okay, but it cannot be in the last minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think kind of unfair for both the school and the parents to, to be, you know, open in about two, three days. There's a lot of people need to be involved. On this one, Doc, uh, um, I just feel mm-hmm. like you, yeah. in order to fix a problem, you got to acknowledge it's a problem. Yeah. And I haven't uh, heard public health acknowledge, "Yo, we don't have enough contact tracers." Yeah, you know, I, I just don't get it. Like, they don't what even, is going on? Answering the on phone, phone is a problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> not, you guys, you know, uh, contact tracing and uh, and uh, in school for positive uh, need to be firmly in place um, and we need to have to dedicate manpower just for the school alone with that's 20 something thousand kids there so it's that's beside the uh, contact tracing for the general public um and uh, so those those have to be in place you know the uh, the update on the immunization status for this um for the staff uh, gdoe uh, need to be made public um you know, a testing plan for the people that choose not to be vaccinated need to be in place and uh, for that way public know that 
all the mitigation factor have been in place, right? Um, as a huge difference when the private school and public school, yes, I hear the comment from some private school this morning. Yeah, they they are by far take a lot of initiative to protect the, their their student and my hats off to them. And I feel like that um, they are you know um, uh, they are ready to um, to open the school for the children on the private side in those schools. Well, because they're because also they, dealing with a, a smaller student load, right, Doc? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they deal with a smaller uh, student ratio. And, and yeah, they those private schools, to me, uh, they should be open. I think that should be um, uh, 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 across the board that if the, the school are ready uh, and have all the, all the mitigation factor, all the plan in place, they should be allowed to open, you know, because I, again, as much as we can put education for our children, the better, that's the future of Guam. Um, but we have to be cautious, right? I mean, this is where the policymaker need to listen to the private clinic that do outpatient care. Seriously, um, AMC, SD, and FHP, and the, and the smaller clinic that do outpatient care, um, they have to get input from it. I tell you, um, I do not like to see but the, what's the difference when two, three weeks ago and now is the increase in children that test positive for COVID and that's sick. So you know that's something that we truly, truly need to pay attention to. Um, you know, right now, yes, we don't have any children in the hospital, but um, we do not want to follow the trend, the state that all the children hospital in the state are completely full, right? Um, just because, you know, well, number one is we don't have a, a, p, a pediatric ICU person specialist on the island. We don't. Uh, Dr. Argan is um, Julian Argan is adult uh, intensive care person, and and uh, but pediatric a different bone game. And usually when this thing attack the children, it's involved the heart, and we don't have a pediatric cardiologist on the island. So things like that. As a physician, I have to look to see. Hey. I don't want that to happen to my children. Um, it only takes one for us to realize, hey, we're in trouble. So uh, we have to see ahead of time to do that. But again, you know, if the school have all the mitigation factor in place, they have a good solid plan um, in place, then yeah, they can open a school. That's number one, contact tracing has to be in place by themselves the work along with the school nurse um, in order for us to open the school, um, you know, uh, in a safe manner. Right. And, and the way that the report on the Jake and the newspaper on the positive of the student in school had to be done somewhat differently, you know, um, because the, from what I see uh, in the past is that when the, when the student tests positive, um, it's, it's truly come from home. You know, it's not from the school, but the way we report it is really not fair for the parents or other students because now they panic. But they really left out in the dark and not know what's going on. So actually, a lot of things need to be in place and change from, um, you know, compared to two, three weeks ago and now. Um, so we have to do that. Doc, I know you're talking about planning, right? And and nothing has changed in two to three weeks. Uh, but things have changed. They've actually gotten worse, right? So, I mean, yeah, let, yeah. let me just go back, right? 329 positive. We've mm -hmm. seen 200 positives, over 100. Po I don't even, I don't even know what to say anymore, right? Uh, yeah. But we what about keeping the kids safe, man? That, that's why she made this decision in the first place. And I want to say, yeah. like, had she followed your advice that you were asking her to follow that maybe we would have been in a little bit of a better position today. Yeah, you know, um, change in that, I'm not change of no change in the community you have the first first the different than change put in place in the school uh, in order to protect our children. Uh, you know, um, so those those are two, two different change. I think that we just need to hear what the change in the school uh, now and two weeks ago what is in place that's different you know uh, uh i'm talking about the whole school system it's, it's not uh, just a private school private school 
they have made a lot of change uh, way before the school opened. Um, so um, they, like I say, the, the number is much smaller, it's easier to handle. Um, um, so uh, it's, it's, for example, the Jackman School, they, the population is so small and those are very good control thing together. So there's not gonna be any positive plan of that school. But you know, um, but for the general school that, that I go to public school, now it is a huge school system that, you know, they really need to have a, 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 a very firm backup that they, the GDOE and public health have to be in the same plate um, and present that to the people um, before, you know, the parents are comfortable to send the kid back to school. Uh, you know, the, the search will continue on the outside. I don't think that our mitigation factor to curb the search uh, right now uh, is not enough. You know, we, we really not change any gathering. You know, the gathering of certain business are still untouched. They're still 100%. It just doesn't make sense. You know, the uh, we have the um, monoclonal antibody uh, treatment. Um, that treatment is decreased, it's mean to decrease the hospitalization up to about 70%, uh, but it won't curve the surge. You know, the positivity rate will always gonna be there. The IV treatment is, is there, it's very important is to cut down the hospitalization as we identify these people and give them the monoclonal antibody before they hit the hospital. Right. So that is now to decrease the hospitalization but it does not decrease the surge. It's not. Yeah, so we but we just heard from the, GMA they run out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we we are that we don't have any on the island. Correct. At this point in Iran, but I think that we have another treatment, IV treatment that that we use in the past. Um, no, it's not as effective as the Regeneron, but it's better than nothing at this point. Wow. So, um, which, you know, which one I, is this one? I, uh, uh, I think it's a it's it's a combination of the, it's the same concept, um, um, but um, it's not as effective against the Delta virus um, as the Regeneron. So it it will work for the typical variants, except on the Delta virus, your variants is is not as effective. Uh, but I think the Regeneron uh, on uh, on order. The question time frame is. Um, how fast can we get it to the item? But we right now we have a backlog of patients that are waiting for that IV treatment. Um, like I said, the 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 idea is to give this to the patient that high risk uh, to prevent them from getting worse and end up in the hospital. So it worked very well. We um, we should plan ahead of time and not running out uh, of this. You know. Um, but right now, the whole nation are high demand, so we, we might be on backwards just because there's the demand is so Yeah, but um, we got a whole team coming out next week. I know. I hope they're bringing treatment some. Treatment team. Uh, Doc, yeah. I know you're you're not advising the governor anymore, but I, I would like to ask you before we let you go to advise the people of Guam. Uh, six weeks into this surge, the measures that are in place, that this governor has put in place, to me, when I look at it, absolutely ineffective. The targeting of the unvaccinated, uh, the exclusion of that has done nothing to slow the spread of the virus. In fact, it looks like it's only made things worse. So what's your advice yeah. to the people of Guam this morning, Doc? I think we all have to work together, the vax and unvax. Uh, we all have to work together. Um, go back to the true, true basic stuff. You know, wear your mask, you know, wash your hand and social distance. And if you are sick, or you feel anything like runny nose or a little bit of coughing, a little congestion, um, a little sore throat, especially on the fully vaccinated person, you need to identify that and stay home and go get tested uh, because that's some um, um, that's not just a common cold. Um, the reason that you have mild symptoms because you fully vaccinated, but again, you have uh, you can transmit the virus just like the uh, unvax. So we have to put together as the same group again as the one one people vax or unvax 
and go back to basic, respect each other. And that's the only way that we can curb this. Uh, you know, the business community have uh, stepped forward and put themselves down to 50%. Uh, so they are doing their job. They, uh, they do a wonderful job. Uh, just a gathering, uh, again, need to be kind of, uh, I know the 100% out there in a certain sector, but I think the community can help by not attend those gatherings so much. And that's the only way that we can protect the whole island. Again, um, the children that 12... You know, we, we do the three basic and everyone work together. Um, so Chris Aquina, I tell you the school, the, the school are safe to go to, to school. It's just a message had to be out there uh, for the parents. Uh, again, the private school are totally different. Uh, GDOE as a whole, uh, I think that whatever change that we, was in place so different than two weeks ago had to be in public. So that way the public know that hey, chain have been in place, mm. uh, that now we can safely open the school. But uh, so far there's no message out there what the change is. You know, so um, we, we had to do a lot of planning. I would say that if we're going to open the school for GDOE, you know, I would say give it two, three weeks um, um, to put the plan together, present it to, to the public, and then they can open, you know, safely. Right. Um, again, to curve this surge, it's going to take two cycles of the virus. So we have to go back and remember that two full cycle. Yeah. If we do things correct, that means one month to curve the surge if we do things correctly. We just we talked about curve. this this morning, Doc. Huh? We talked about this this morning about why aren't we doing the whole thing we did last year where it's like you put the restrictions in place, you let them play out for yeah. two weeks, you look at the numbers and you make a decision. Yeah. It's the tech two, two cycle of the virus, okay, to curve it. So that's been one month. Thank you, Doc. So, to, to make the planning. Okay, guys, be safe. And, you know, um, yeah, I think, the, again, the, the school opening, um, I, I I support the private school. They think they are ready. Um, but, again, the, for everyone else, you know, I think that a message had to go to come out to the public and let GDOE have time to put it in place. Yeah. Yeah. And public health's got to step up because uh, if they can't even answer the phone, how are we going to expect them to handle contact tracing at this at the school level when our children yeah. who are unvaccinated are, are very much at risk of not just catching the virus or the variants, but, you know, being very sick when they do. Thank you, Doc. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. You're welcome. Be safe, please, okay? Always. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Doc. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, why haven't we beefed up public health? Or I mean, uh, you know, I'm looking at this uh, COVID-19 situation report and it's, this it takes you back to like the first case when everything started March 12th, 2020 to September 3rd, 2021. And so they post this on their on their website okay. weekly. So it's behind a, a week.